Hey folks, Joseph Isabora here, doing another movie review this week. This time, it's A Star is Born. This is the brand new remake that's based on the same name from 1947 with Janet Gaynor and Frederick March, which led to the first remake with Julie Garland and James Mason, followed by the 1976 remake with Chris Christopherson and Barbara Streisand. Um, same plot, different generation. I mean, it follows a story about a musician who has an alcoholic problem and is a drug addict who suddenly discovers and falls in love with a talented young singer. Um, this time uh, we got Bradley Cooper to play the role, who not only stars in the film, but he also produced and directed it, as well as co-wrote, you know, with Eric Roth and Will Fetters. A big surprise for this movie, though, was that Bradley Cooper can sing, and yes, he sings um, stunningly very well. I couldn't believe. This was his voice, so this was not lip sync or anything like that. This was his real voice, and it really was powerful. Uh, Lady Gaga is now the young singer to play the role, and she acted before uh, with films like Machete Kills and Sin City, A Dame to Kill For, you know, both of which were sequels to their first films. So I guess you know, this was their great honor to actually have her to play because she is a very talented uh, pop singer surprisingly enough I have listened to Lady Gaga's songs um, you know during the course of the late 2000s and early 2010s and I'm not the biggest fan of today's pop music granted I mean I do listen to other songs here and there and I do listen to other music that joins around here I mean, even though I love uh, 80s and 90s music from its time, and even some classic rock, alternative rock, and any other. I mean, just depends on what mood I, I feel. <laughs> but I was a bit surprised that she was stunningly good. Um, I was actually afraid because, you know, it could have been a whole lot worse. I mean, this was a, a tough material to take. But she took the risk, and she did it. But I guess you got to owe it to Cooper, because even though this is his first directorial debut, and he wrote the screenplay to join in, I guess he was trying to challenge uh, Chris Christopherson, sort of a blend in with Sam Elliott, which, interestingly enough, he's in the movie, you know, to, to give it a powerful Western voice. You know, trying to sound as different as he can. Because it really shows how, how talented the actor is. And I always loved Bradley Cooper ever since I've seen him in films like um, Wedding Crashers. Yeah, because he was an asshole in that movie, but you get the idea. And um, all these other films he's been in. Yeah, like The Hangover and Yes Man. And ones up doing the voice of Rocket the Raccoon and... Yeah, Rocket Raccoon and the Guardians of the Galaxy film, so. And he also went on to do films like American Sniper, so. It really proves that he can definitely do everything. And it's good to know that it did win an Oscar for Best Original Song, uh, for Lady Gaga's song Shallow. Yeah, they actually had a duet together in the movie, so. It was very powerful, but again, I didn't watch the Oscars, so. But I did actually saw a video clip of it uh, online, and I was really impressed. Um, it was beautiful, incredible. That I'm just glad they won. I... So, wow. <laughs> um, of course, I'm not exactly the biggest fan of country music, but that's okay. I mean, there are some artists that I can deal with. And some good songs here and there. So I think this movie really fits to its period. 
Anyway, let, let's review the film. It stars Lady Gaga, whose real name is Stephanie Germanata, uh, Bradley Cooper, Sam Elliott, great actor, no doubt about it, Dave Chappelle, yes, Dave Chappelle, the comedian, I always love him, he's, he's always hilarious and fun. <laughs> um, also, um, speaking of comedians, um, Andrew Dice Clay, yeah, is also in this. Um, as well as uh, Eddie Griffin, he's also in the movie too. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. Anthony Ramos, Rafi Gavron, and Greg uh, Grunberg, and Ron Rifkin. It's written by, once again, Eric Roth, with Bradley Cooper co-writing it, and Will Fetters. Also, I guess I forgot to mention, he's also the co-producer of the film, too, with Todd Phillips joining in, and John Peters, Bill Gilbert, even Lynette Tower-Taylor. And it's directed by Bradley Cooper. The movie begins when we meet a famous country music singer named Jackson Maine, whose nickname is Jack, who's played by Bradley Cooper, who's uh, privately battling an alcohol and drug addiction, as he plays a nice concert in California with his manager and older half-brother, Bobby, who's played by Sam Elliott, who's his main support. So after the show, Jack decided to visit a transvestite bar where he witnessed a performance by a waitress and singer-songwriter named Allie, who was played by Lady Gaga. Jack was so amazed by her performance that they spend the night together, you know, chatting around, you know, talking about, you know, her experience and everything. But, um, unfortunately, she does talk about um, insecurity, where she's afraid to actually uh, pursue a music career because of her appearance such as her big nose. Yeah, you see this right there. <laughs> so Jack decided to help her. Um, just getting a drink, making conversation, and I know there was there was even another moment where, you know, she had to wear that, um, that fake eyebrow and try to peel it off because it was done by tape. So, <laughs> anyway. But when they were in the local bar, um, just having a drink and making conversation. She had a fight with a guy. So he punches him and then that's where she had a wound. So Jack took Allie straight to a local supermarket, which is Super A Foods, in the Downey area. And just get some supplies and, and try to find some frozen peas and some tape to wrap around her room, like a band-aid. And then continue to chat around. You know, talking about, you know, her performance, where this is where Allie starts to, uh, to sing. And she sings uh, very powerful. Uh, very amazing. She really has a powerful voice. And she really has a steadily singing voice. Um, so as, as days gone by, um, Ali had disclosed him with the trouble she faced during while pursuing a professional music career. Jack would later invite uh, Ali to his next show, but despite of her refusal, she attends with Jack's encouragement to go around. She decided to sing on stage with him, which the song was called Shallow. They sing a duet together, and which of course, Jack did invite Allie to go on tour with him since then. And they actually form a romantic relationship with each other. Um, so when they went to um, Arizona, Allie and Jack had visited the ranch where Jack actually grew up and where he found out that his father was buried. But then, then he discovers that Bobby sold the land. And against, uh, by his betrayal, um, Jack actually punches Bobby, and all, and Bobby suddenly uh, quits. 
as his manager. But Bobby did reveal that he did inform Jack about the sale, but it didn't work out as it seems. But while they were on tour, Ali suddenly meets uh, a record producer named Rez, uh, who's uh, played by Rafi Gavon. Uh, it's a, yeah, he's a music producer behind Interscope Records and actually offers her a contract. But despite what was going on here and there, Jack still supports her decision while Rez suddenly refocused Ali away from country music into pop music. Yes, and that's where you kind of get to it. I mean, she even wrote some other songs that uh, Jack actually helped join in, hoping this will work. But what makes things worse was, you know, due to the the alcohol and the drug addiction that he's been going through, because he still drinks and he still, you know, snorts some coke. Jack actually missed one of Ali's performances, and and what's even worse, um, he passes out drunk uh, in public which leads to a lot of embarrassments. I mean, he just, he started to act like a fool. He's not exactly himself at this point on, but then, you know, he realized his mistakes he's been making. I mean, this this was really affecting him so bad. He then recovers at his home from his best friend named George Noodle Stone, who's played by Dave Chappelle. It's really cool. Uh, love his performance. Actually later made up with, with Ali, and this is where he actually proposed to Ali for marriage. By using, get this, a guitar string as a ring. <laughs> a wedding ring. So during that same day, they, they got married at a local church um, with uh, Noodles' relatives and all the way around. And, you know, things were going good for the better. So now they even have their own home. They even have a dog, too. But with Ali, you know, continuing with her performances as a pop star, you know, just got her first album, self-titled album. Got a big billboard, too. <laughs> that she decided to do a performance on Saturday Night Live with the host of Alec Baldwin in a uh, cameo appearance, by the way. But Bobby suddenly reconciles with Jack, which then later Jack and Allie had a fight during his uh, disapproval by her new image and music, because yeah, he was very drunk. Apparently, uh, she was nominated for free Grammy Awards, which makes it even worse because uh, Jack was doing a tribute to uh, Roy Orbison, yeah, the legendary... Uh, rock singer and songwriter, yeah, known for singing Pretty Woman, and all his other great songs, that, um, that led to an embarrassment where, you know, he started smoking once again, coke, and started drinking a lot that caused him to move uh, very slowly, started sturdily, and, you know, even having trouble standing up, too, you know, trying to play the beats. And then, to make matters worse, he embarrassed himself right in front of Ali and the rest of uh, the crew and the audience around where he started um, taking a fall and, you know, and, and then even worse, he even pees on himself. It, it was, it was really messed up that because of that, he was taken to a rehab program for only two months, you know, so he can recover. Um, meanwhile, Ali is just continuing on her own, touring on many places, and trying, but trying to help um, Jack up to see how how things are going to go and how things are going to happen. But well, long story short, it just you know it. it it took a lot of time for him to recover, but then it could only get much worse at the end. But for a third remake of of A Star Is Born, 
I really enjoy this one a lot. I mean, I, I know in recent years, you know, we're, we're not getting that many good remakes. I mean, we're getting a lot of really bad ones. Especially the horror remakes that we have here. But this was a big surprise. And, again, I, I love the performances of both Bradley Cooper and and Lady Gaga. I, I thought they really took this movie uh, up to the point. They They were really good. They really deserve what they can with their performances. I mean, it could have been a lot worse, but thank goodness it really helped. I, I love the supporting cast, like Sam Elliott. Uh, it was great to see Andrew Dice Clay again after all these years. Yeah, I, I don't really see him that much. I mean, I know he's been doing other recent stuff too, but but it was great to see him play uh, Ali's father. I mean, and he was the one who wanted her to join in in the first place because he was very stunned and he really cares for her daughter so much, taking the will and willing to. And plus, it's really cool to see Andrew Dice Clay play a nice guy for a change. So it really shows. Um, it was also cool to see Dave Chappelle in the movie, and even though it was a bit of a, a small role, but it was nice to see him. And so was Eddie Griffin. He also had a, a tiny role. Um, but that that was ex. He plays uh, his friend. So this so almost felt like a little bit of a undercover brother <laughs> reunion there. That sort of way. Um, I mean, the story really um, saves uh, everything what they could. I mean, it's not easy having to adapt something, but whatever they can do, um, as long as they do it for for what's right. I mean, it, it is, I, I guess it really shows that it's hard to, um, it's hard to, you know, struggle this hard, you know, with your performances and, you know, having to deal with alcohol and, and drugs that really affects your life so badly that it's just not exactly the same as you once was. And that's the problem. And I know Allie struggled a lot too, you know, trying to make it big. With Jack's help, that's where she stands, but even she's afraid. Uh, we also learned that um, uh, Jack also had uh, tinnitus uh, when he was a kid, yes. So he had some hearing problems uh, on his ear. That, that really was affecting the sound, like you begin to hear a, a lot of um, whistling noises in, on there. So that's why sometimes he has to wear um, some some hearing aids, you know, to, to do so. Um, but yeah. But either way, um, um, surprisingly it was a huge hit at the box office. Um, its budget was only between 36 or 40 million only made 430.5 million dollars it, it really won its audience and I'm glad to see you know they they really appreciate it considering that this is the same story that's been told um, a few times so. but anyway great music by the way a lot of great songs uh, coming from both Cooper and Gaga, it really, really stunned me, really, it really stunned me so well, I love it, and, and also Sam Elliott was very good too, uh, I, I, I love the, the moment where he was like saying that he actually stole my voice, because yes, they, they both sound alike, you know, Cooper does manage to give it a western, uh, Sam Elian type of voice that, that he's, he's not sounding exactly like what he really sounds. <laughs> I, I love that. Um, well, Gaga sounds a bit more Hispanic in a way, even though she's American too. Um, but it's sort, sort of a mix of Italian too, I can definitely see. But she's um, very powerful with the makeup and the red hair that she's given, so she looks as beautiful as ever. I mean, 
So it's nice that she really uh, took the challenge to do so. I mean, granted, it is a very sad drama, too. I mean, I think you'll definitely be bursting into tears uh, by the time you see it. But at the same time, you're, you're definitely going to be happy. With it. But anyway, um, I highly recommend A Star is Born. Whatever version you like to choose, I mean, this one is the best one we ever got for, for this generation alone. So anyway, as A Star is Born, and I give it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.